Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to my summit presentation. My name is Caleb Aguilera. I wanted to talk to you about the importance of local journalism. To start off, I wanted to share a story with you. So this past summer, I worked as an intern at the Daily Press newspaper in Victorville, which is in my hometown. It's a local paper there. Um, working at the Daily Press was actually a formative time for me because I got to see the passion and the nobility that often accompanies working at a local paper. Um, the people there are passionate about writing stories that impact and serve the community around them. And they do it for very little pay or recognition. That summer, there's also a, a tragic shooting at another local paper in Maryland, uh, the Baltimore Gazette. I'm sure many of you remember that. I remember watching everything take place on the TV in the newsroom for the Daily Press. And it was terrible, but there was also a sense of camaraderie among journalists at that time. And during that moment, I was able to participate in that and to feel that camaraderie. The Daily, or yeah, the Baltimore Gazette, they still managed to publish their newspaper the next day after the shooting. It was amazing, and the journalism world admired and applauded them for being able to do that. And for me, it showed me why local journalists do what they do. It showed me the passion behind what they do. And they, they come in every day, they write stories for little pay to an audience that usually doesn't appreciate them, but they do it because they have a passion to serve the community and to tell stories. And this has given me a passion for local journalism, and it's inspired me to pursue local journalism when I graduate. However, there has been an alarming trend taking place in local journalism. Um, here's what I mean by that. I have another story for you. So in July 2012, a mass shooting occurred at a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado. Um, it was a tragedy, but as terrible as it was, it provided a moment for local journalism to shine. The Denver Post, which is a, a big paper in Colorado, um, they came in with award-winning coverage of the shooting in the aftermath. Uh, this is a photo of their staff shortly after they won the Pulitzer Prize in 2013 for their coverage of the shooting. They, the, the Denver Post was going strong with over 250 reporters, editors, photographers, designers, and much more, even though not all of them are in this picture here. However, if you were to look at the Denver Post staff today, it looks quite different. The, the ranks at the Denver Post have shrunk from over 250 to less than 100 reporters. You see, the Denver Post was bought out by Digital First Media in 2010. And Digital, Digital First Media is a, a national media giant that has been purchasing smaller papers all across the country. It's uncertain why exactly they cut the Denver Post staff, but this effect is typical all across the board. A media giant will swoop in, buy a struggling paper, and they then proceed to cut the newsroom staff and increase the cost of subscriptions. The Denver Post claimed that their owners effectively began charging more money for lower quality content. And I've actually seen this happen up close at the Daily Press. I've seen the effects of it. Although the Daily Press never got to the size of the Denver Post or the Orange County Register or other local papers you might read. When I worked there, I still heard numerous stories of the former glory days at the paper, when there were enough reporters to go around and the newsroom was bigger than ever. I remember during the summer I would go to cover a fire or an accident with a public safety reporter, and she would tell me stories about how she missed the times when she would go out to cover something and there would be someone there with her. She had missed the times when there was a second public safety reporter or there was more photographers who would go with her. Eventually, the paper was bought out by another media company, not Digital First, but a different company. And that's when the layoffs came. The newsroom was stripped to the bare bones. Now picture this. The high desert is a big area and the daily press is the main daily newspaper for that area. It's the main news source. Um, the high desert has more than eight towns or cities within it, and it might be hard to see just how big it is here, but you can see how many cities are contained within this area. So you have eight cities, and here's how many reporters the Daily Press had to cover all of that. They had four reporters. 
four reporters, two sports reporters, which don't really count. Um, <laughs> they cover different things, let's be honest. Uh, four reporters, two sports reporters, two editors, one photographer, poor soul, and an intern, which was me. They were always out covering stories and trying to keep up with everything that was happening. And I could see the exhaustion in their eyes. It almost made me reconsider being a journalist. And it was needless to say they were stretched thin. And it had, a, it had an effect on the quality of the work that they were producing. But I'll get into that more later. What happened to the Denver Post, to the Daily Press, has been happening all across the country. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, from 1990 to 2016, the number of journalists in the United States has dropped from 456,000 to around 183,000. You can see it's the blue line on the top here. You can see the steady decline throughout the years. Another statistic, the San Jose Mercury News, which is a, a prominent paper in the Bay Area, in the 90s they reported having 400 union represented journalists. Uh, a, new, a recent count that happened earlier this year saw that number drop to 41. So they went from 400 to 41 journalists. Local newsrooms all across the country are shrinking. It's happened in our backyard as well. Dig Digital First Media, which owns the Denver Post, they also own the Southern California News Group, and the Southern California News Group owns the Orange County Register, uh, Riverside Press Enterprise, Los Angeles Daily News, the San Bernardino Sun, and the Whittier Daily News. Those papers have experienced similar layoffs in a shrinking newsroom staff. Just earlier this year, the Southern California News Group announced another round of layoffs where more than 65 journalists were set to lose their jobs. So now you can see the decline that's taking place. It's, it's evident, you can't ignore it, but here's why that's a bad thing. The decline in local journalism has been hailed by academics and commentators as a threat to democracy itself. And that made sound dramatic. I thought it sounded dramatic when I first heard it. But the more I began to research and to look into it, the more it began to make sense. And the reason why the decline in local journalism is a threat to democracy is because of the effect that that decline has on the public and has on the audience. So there's two effects. For the first effect, uh, the Pew Research Center did a study on where local papers get their news from, where the sources come from. And they found that by and large, as you can see in the pie chart, the main news source that papers would go to to get their information was the government. And this, this forces papers to rely on press releases that local officials have sent out rather than, actually rather than actually investigating and being on the scene. A smaller newsroom means less reporters to create original content that comes from quality reporting and investigating. They instead just rely on what the government tells them, which is kind of contrary to what we're supposed to do as journalists. It hinders the accountability that journalism is meant to provide creates a power shift toward local government. Another effect that I wanted to go into was the American University in Washington, D.C. They published a study showing that the number of people who come out to vote in an election decreases with the, the amount of reporting in that area. So if there's not much reporting, less people are likely to come out to vote. And this is because local news is the main way that citizens stay engaged with their local community. And it's the main way that they keep up with the politics happening in the cities around them. Local news is how we know what our mayor is up to. It's how we know how our public schools are performing. And it's how we know who and what to vote for in elections. So if there's less, if there's smaller newsrooms and less journalists, then it's less likely for the public to get the information they need to vote and function responsibly in a democratic environment. And this is what I saw happen at the Daily Press. The Daily Press is filled with many talented journalists who produce good work, but much of the paper's content is recycled press releases from officials or recycled stories from other publications like AP Newswire. And this is a problem, but the solution is simple, albeit hard to accomplish. Uh, we need more journalists, and we need a lot of them. 
These problematic trends all come down to a lack of funding, a lack of money to pay enough good reporters to do their jobs. Uh, newspapers, they get the bulk of their money from advertising from other companies, but with the rise of social media and the internet, many companies have found it more profitable to advertise their product in other places, which means a lack of funding for newspapers. Um, giant papers like the Washington Post or LA Times, they've all survived by being funded by billionaires, and they're also, they have a big enough readership where they can get by on subscriptions. And local papers usually don't have that luxury. And this is a big part of what's gone wrong for local journalism. But the good news is that it's adapting. Take uh, Report for America, for example. Report for America is a nonprofit initiative that hires journalists all across the country and places them in newsrooms all across the country. And they pay half of the reporter's salary, and the other half is split between the newsroom they're placed in and uh, local donors in that area. And this reflects the growing opinion that a nonprofit section, the nonprofit section, should play a larger role in journalism. Journalism should be valued just like uh, hospitals or libraries, because they're, they're social institutions that are vital to our community, and their absence can definitely be felt. And all of this boils down to one thing. Journalists need more money. Newspapers need more money. If I'm going to graduate and become a journalist, I need more money. And we should give it to them. You should give it to them. You should give me your money. <laughs> Seriously, we should all buy newspaper subscriptions. Because this all really comes down to us seeing the value of the local paper and seeing what's going to happen if they fade away, and what's going to happen to our community and our democracy. Keeping local news afloat will ultimately lead to a better informed audience who can make responsible decisions based on the facts. So that's how saving local journalism might just save democracy. Thank you.